Today I'm going to talk about biological control of insect and pest. Biological tools are an important component of integrated pest management. When I say integrated pest management, it refers to the combination of different management strategies that includes biological controls, chemical tools, different cultural methods, and etc. And biological tools are one of the important ones. That means you are using this beneficial insects or beneficial organism to kill your harmful insect and pest in the field. So let's start with the breeder mites. They are very commonly used uh, breeders for the control of mites and other insects. Emblysia sursky is one of the versatile and voracious predatory mite. It's effective against white fly, thrips, spider mites, and some tarsonemid mites. Uh, two spotted spider mite is a very common problem uh, for which Phytocillus persimilis has been very effective. And uh, this is the concentrated formulation of Phytocillus persimilis, which uh, comes in a, a container and you mix with vermiculite and make the concentrated uh, formulation and you slowly mix with the uh, uh, other vermiculite and dilute it. So this uh, is a cheaper way of buying a predatory mites. Uh, it can come in the bottles which already has a 2000 or 4000 mites per bottle and you can use them but buying these from and diluting by yourself is a, is a very cost effective way. So once you make the final product, uh, you know you can have them in the buckets, and uh, you use a pressurized gun to release them in the in the nurseries and field. Uh, if it's a few plants, smaller scale, you can manually release it. But uh, these guns make the release process very faster. And uh, like you see the vermiculite, but sometimes you can have the sawdust also as formulation that might getting mixed with the sawdust but a lot of times there's been issue with clogging the machine with the sawdust you go over the plants and you release those predatory mites on the plant surface so it is better if the plants are closely spaced so that they can travel in between the plant uh, it create better environment for them to survive uh, and they should be full if they're really trimmed there's no foliage uh, no. it's kind of waste of, uh, of the predatory mites and there needs to be already existing spider mite population for this predatory mite to feed on and survive and uh, a lot of times these uh, predatory mites feed on 5 to 10 adults per day so another factor to consider the for the efficacy of these predatory mites Doing is water. these mites are reared in the laboratory condition in the optimal temperature and all kind of environmental condition and when you're releasing these mites in the extreme conditions with heat or rainfall then you might not get the same level of efficacy as expected. Uh, these mites are shipped in a, a cooler uh, with the uh, with the ice pack on it. So you know, receiving of these materials and the proper storage of these materials are really critical. You should be releasing right after you you receive these materials. So this is the the container that comes in. Uh, these are 2,000 persimilis in one container, uh, and you just pour those whole mites in the bigger container and use that uh, for the blowing. When you're using a pressurized machine, a lot of times if you're using higher pressure, these predator mites might hit the plant surface and land on the ground. So using the right pressure on the gun is really, really important. And also you have to be careful about the wind direction. If it's windy, your material might be blown away to the other places. Uh, inside the shade houses, hand release are the very optimal condition to release these predatory mites. So we just released these predatory mites with the hand and they just landed on the leaf surface. That's how uh, we want the material to land. And a lot of times when you get this material, you need to do a quality control. You need to make sure you are getting a, a live mites. When you get it, they, they you receive them in the cooler so they are not very active. But after that, you should put in the white paper, bring them in the warmer temperature outside and see the activity and movement of these, these mites. And also the numbers because they claim 2000 mites per bottle, but you need to see 
good numbers when you are uh, checking this this mites and this is a predatory mite that's walking um, and a lot of times people get confused with the red mites you see that that's a red mite uh, which is more reddish dark red color versus predator mites are orangish kind of color so you need to be able to know which is a good mite which is a bad mite when you're scouting your field so yeah we we do check uh, on these mites whenever we see bear just random checks couple of bottles um, and uh, after we release uh, these mites next day we checked uh, the efficacy so we saw these predator mites are feeding on the eggs of the two spotted spider mites. They don't only feed on eggs, they also feed on uh, on the adults also, but eggs are more susceptible and probably easy to feed. So other than these predatory mites, there are different kind of beetles that are also used as a biological tool. Cryptolemus montreuxier, which is a ladybird, a mealybug ladybird, is one of the beetles that attacks citrus mealybug and other closely related mealybug in addition to some soft scale. So when I got this material, they, these beetles were not active because they were also uh, pa um, delivered in the cooler. So they are inactive right now. So I'm trying to take it outside uh, and put it in the warmer uh, temperature. So, you know, when you touch it, they're just like a not moving beetles. So only issue with the beetles is like a, once they start moving, they're pretty mobile insects. So it's easy to apply. You can just release anywhere in the field or the top of the plant. But then again, the issue is these beetles can fly away anywhere to the nearing field. Because, and also they need to have a good amount of meaty work to eat. Uh, so these are the contrary jasmine heavily infested with mealybug. Those mealybugs are in between stake and the plant stem and insecticides can reach out to those places. So we are sprinkling or releasing beetles so that these beetles can crawl inside the plant stem and the stake and feed on those mealybugs. Wasps are also another type of predator. For example, this is a combination of black parasitic wasp and lemon yellow parasitic wasp for different white fly species. So pupae of these wasps are attached to these cords. They are slow release cord. You see the white and the black things, those are the pupae. And you hang these cords on the plant stem, maybe on the bottom because white flies are underside of the leaves on the bottom leaves so you hang them and over the time these pupae convert into the adult wasps and feed the white fly that are infecting your plant. So at the end, the most challenging aspect of using this biological organism is the compatibility of the pesticide that you're using with this biological organism. For example, different insecticides such as neonicotinoids, pyrethroids, different mining sites, uh, different fungicides such as copper, diethane, oils, soaps are not safer for this biological organism. These can kill those biological organisms. So when you are choosing your pesticides, you need to have a pesticide program that is safer for this biological organism. Or at least, if you have to use these chemicals, you need to have a good uh, separation between the application of these chemicals and the release of those predators or, or beneficial organisms. Even though there are many challenges associated with the adoption of biological control program, these are the important component of integrated pest management. They are safer, eco-friendly, cheaper sometimes, and a sustainable way of managing pests.